in the next hour on Trial Story. People versus Jack Kevorkian. Dr. Kevorkian stands trial for helping a man commit suicide. The state says it's illegal to help someone die. Flagrant and disobedience of our law. But Kevorkian insists he's ending people's pain. This is not easy. criminal. In the next hour on Trial Story, from opening statements to the verdict, Michigan versus Kevorkian, the trial of Dr. Death. Turn this one on. 60 seconds Jack later, Kevorkian has made a career out of helping people die. I've been fascinated by death because I wonder what this unknown is is facing me. Uh, that's one. Aspect. Have a nice trip, Kevorkian told his first patient, Janet Adkins, as she died on a cot in the back of his van in 1990. Earning national renown, Kevorkian proceeded to help 16 others die. I will continue to help suffering patients no matter what. By February of 1993, the state of Michigan, where Kevorkian lives and works, had had enough. Legislators passed a law banning assisted suicide. Kevorkian paid no attention. Dr. Jack Kevorkian has assisted in his 17th suicide. His patient this time, 30-year-old Thomas Hyde. Hyde's wife, Heidi, remembers him this way. Tom was an extremely physical person. We were happiest when we were outside. Tom was always outside. Tom was such a attentive father. He lived life for every moment. Shortly after his 29th birthday, Hyde was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or Lou Gehrig's disease, a neurologic disorder that quickly cripples and kills its victims. There was nothing treatable about ALS. There was no treatment at all. In June of 1993, Hyde contacted Dr. Jack Kevorkian. Well, Tom, uh, what is it you wish? Tell me your wish in plain English. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Hyde got his wish. On August 4th, Kevorkian loaded him into his van. He brought a plastic face mask, some tubing, and a canister of carbon monoxide. I connected the tubing to the tank. I put the clip on the tubing. I put the mask over on uh, Mr. Hyde's face because he could not move that much. He could barely move his left hand, uh, his uh, left forearm. And Apparently, Hyde had strength enough for the task at hand. I instructed him then if he was sure, then he, all he had to do was move his left forearm a bit and pull. It was a short string of about six or eight inches to the clip uh, tied around his finger, and he then pulled the string, and the clip came off the tubing, and the, it was a slow flow of gas, very, very slow uh, volume. Uh, and uh, he then went on and died. Kevorkian wanted to be arrested. The day after Hyde's death, he made a public a confession. I assisted Thomas Hyde in a, in a merciful suicide. There's no doubt about that. I stated emphatically. The prosecutor's response uh, was precisely what Kevorkian expected. 64611, People versus Jack Kevorkian. He's charged with suicide assisting. Though 34 states have laws banning assisted suicide, no such law has ever been tested in court before. Kevorkian hoped the case of Michigan versus Kevorkian would do for assisted suicide what Roe versus Wade had done for the abortion issue. It isn't Kevorkian that's on trial. It isn't assisted suicide and euthanasia that's on trial. You know what's on trial? Your civilization and your society. 
Kevorkian and his lawyer, Jeffrey Feiger, quickly upped the moral and political ante. We're, we're fighting the crusades here. We're fighting against religious fanatics, against personal freedom and rights. That's why this trial is so damn important. Prosecutor myself, Timothy Kenny sees things differently. I think that the issue is, is not one of philosophy or, or agreement or disagreement about the issue of assisted suicide. It's, it's more the larger uh, issue of, of um, whether or not Jack Kevorkian is above the law. Michigan law makes it illegal to help someone commit suicide. Prosecutors say Jack Kevorkian broke this law and should be held accountable. Jack Kevorkian says people have an absolute right to make fundamental decisions about their bodies, including when and how they die. Kevorkian says laws that interfere with that right are immoral and should be disregarded. Do people have the right to die? What happens when the law says no? In the next hour, we'll see how these and related moral, political, and philosophical questions play themselves out in court. I haven't had a trial with Mr. Feiger uh, before. Uh, he certainly enjoys a uh, reputation for uh, being very uh, flamboyant. Um, that's not my style. Kenny, he's a fairly competent trial attorney. He ain't in my league, though. Jack has a total disrespect for the law. Are you optimistic? About what? About this trial. What trial? It's not a trial. It's a kangaroo court. All rise. The court is called for the city of Detroit. It's now in session with the Honorable Thomas E. Jackson presiding. In this Detroit courtroom, jurors will hear impassioned arguments about life and death, suffering and compassion, decency and justice. Then they'll be asked to answer a simple question. Did Jack Kevorkian break the law? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. The evidence that will be presented in this case is certainly evidence that will tug on all of our emotions. Focus on the evidence and the law, Prosecutor Timothy Kenny tells the jurors, reminding them that in Michigan, it's against the law to help someone die. The only thing that does not disintegrate when you are dying of ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, is your mind. And so, if you can imagine the terror of knowing that your entire body is disintegrating and that you will die fully conscious, aware, and finally <coughs> choking to death on your own spit. In his opening statement, defense attorney Jeffrey Feiger gives jurors technical as well as emotional reasons to acquit his client. He tells jurors about the exception to Michigan's anti-assisted suicide law, which allows doctors to relieve patients' pain and suffering, even when doing so causes death. It is not a crime in this state to assist in a suicide if your intent is to relieve suffering even though the procedure that you use may cause or hasten death. Did Jack Kevorkian intend to end Thomas Hyde's suffering, or did he intend to end his life? The following trial and Kevorkian's fate will turn largely on jurors' answer to this hair-splitting question. Stay tuned for the verdict later in this hour. We now return to this episode of Trial Story.